And the first night we got our orders and we were here in Connecticut and we got our orders and we look at it and we're like, wow, 555 days. That's what was printed on our orders. And we kind of like all had a quiet moment. We're like, oh my God, what are we getting ourselves into? We Why called each see? other. Who are you going to go do? Do you think you want to go? And then when I heard some names, mm. okay, call me in. When we first went there, I thought, you know, we're National Guard. They're probably going to have us do base defense or anything. They, they put us right out there, right away on the front lines. We hadn't even unpacked yet. And, yeah. and the mortars started coming in. And that's when we took the fatality and the wounded. And chop your stuff, get your gear on, you're going. Off duty, you know, we're all very tight. We're all like brothers. We're all great friends. A little extra radiation from the depleted uranium shell was good for you, you know? <laughs> we worked together. We did missions together. And then in our off time, you know, we relax to go to the gym, you know, go work out, watch play movies, soccer. play soccer, do whatever we can to kill time and everything. It was uh, the little things that kept us probably sane. We all had, we all had our little jokes. <laughs> That's definitely an important tool to a soldier is uh, humor, no matter how bad the situation is. Every day was different, you know, every day was a new mission. We didn't have any interpreters at first, like the first like week, two weeks, maybe, I don't even know how long no, it was. No, it was way, way beyond was long that. that. As we started getting our interpreters, it was easier, but the interpreters would try to run with it. Hey, you ask a simple question, simple yes or no answer, and next thing you know, they're having, like you said, a five minute conversation, and I'm like, so was that a yes or a no? He's like, oh, he doesn't know. <laughs> we'd go to the sheik's houses and we'd eat with the Iraqi people. They would cook us big meals and we'd eat with them. I think that was great. When you're over there, you kind of you try to tell yourself that you're doing the right thing, that you're there because your country needs you there. But you know, you always have to get your doubts. Is this really the right thing? I'll tell you, what, election day, I think, cleared a lot of those questions for me. Election day was totally amazing. This is us chilling in Hussein on top of the IP station, guarding it before the historic elections. We helped secure the IP stations, the Iraqi police stations, and it was, it made the people feel better, I think, to come out and vote. Leading up to that, we'd heard all these threats uh, that nobody go vote, they're gonna get killed. They were mortaring the place the night before. They stopped, and then, like you said, around 4.30 in the morning, they started again. And it was like, it was just like raining motors. I'm talking like boom, boom, just constantly boom. And then it stopped again when daylight hit. People were actually getting wounded and they were still standing in line to, to, to vote. We took cover and we started calling in for support, air support, and then uh, the people did the same, when they saw us take a knee and get against the wall, they did the same thing. Our, our interpreter went and voted. He came back, he showed me his finger. So I took a picture of him because he's like doing this, you know? And I took a picture of him and I was like, so uh, what do you think? And he turned around and he said, you know, I'm glad I was wrong. And I said, well, about what? He said, yesterday I told Lieutenant that there was only gonna be like 15 people voting, so there was no need to even have us here. But today it's more like 1,500. Throughout the thing, most of the people were happy for us to be there. When we go through the cities, they would wave on the side of the road, jump up and down. It's just it's not the full story of what people are actually seeing in the news. We actually, acquired medical stuff that we had extra of and brought it to villages and we gave it to the known doctor uh, because there are some things that we saw over there that to us is like nothing like we don't get rotten you know we don't get gangrene or anything like that anymore unless we totally we just let ourselves go over there it's, people don't have shoes i called my sister and asked her to send maybe a few pairs and she told her friends and then my mom told actually uh, the, the school that I went to, the master school, told like a fifth grade class there and they had a shoe drive and just kept getting boxes of shoes. Valentine got out with his boxes of shoes. I'm talking boxes of shoes. Tried to line the kids up and broke out into a mob. Mr. Mr. It's great, you know, that's what, actually one of my fondest memories of just giving shoes to kids. I mean, Connecticut really stepped up with the packages that they sent to us. I can't even imagine how many we did get though. Uh, the uh, hundreds one, of them. One <laughs> thing that I can, I can say was awesome was the Kevlar. When we received Kevlar oh, donations, yeah. it's nice. Dempsey's father was the one who was heading the whole thing up and I guess he put it out because he was a state trooper to anybody who had any type of old flak vest or Kevlar to send to soldiers. And all of us were getting packages, thick packages with just Kevlar's like the inserts and everything, and we lined our Humvees, we lined our trailers for shrapnel. By the time we left, there were people oh, yeah. that I would see them take off their vest, the one military issue, 
and be wearing a police vest bulletproof vest underneath that. I'm like, Jesus, dude, I knew hot. He goes, man, I'd rather be hot than dead. <laughs> all you, man, all power to you. We kept coolers in our Humvees, and I guess at best, and during the heat of the summer, at best it'd be warm water was the coolest we could get. I remember uh, trying to drink water. It was so hot. The ice didn't last any. It lasts like the first hour in the cooler. I remember drinking and putting it in my mouth and waiting for it to drop to body temperature before you swallow it because it was just so, it was just ruthless. Guys were making themselves sick by drinking hot water because we just had to drink something. As long as they said, hey, go patrol this area, try to find the bad guys, if that takes 16 hours, it takes 16 hours, and we did it. We had that one mission where we were just supposed to go to, we were supposed to go down to another base in Baghdad. It was supposed to be like a couple hour mission. Ended up turning into a three day mission to nod you off. Yeah. No <laughs> sleep, no, no, it was horrible. A lot of people counted, I counted a little bit. It was. You didn't want to try to think about it too much, because then you'd get overexcited. Okay, this is our troop before our very last mission in Iraq. The worst time was when we were in Oklahoma, and we had like a week left, and we are just like, ah, oh, and we just kept going to briefing after briefing, and we're like, ah, oh, these things are going to be like six days, five days, and that's when the anticipation really got big, because we could talk to our family. 